Hello folks and welcome to Rome on what I think forevermore is going to be referred to as the day that time almost killed me because as I record this intro it is almost 5pm as you can see we are now in Rome that is Rome behind me. We got up at 3 a.m. this morning and I'm only just starting this video. I did have a couple of attempts to start the video previously. I even tried at like 3.30 this morning in the hotel. 3.51 a.m. on a Friday morning. We've been up exactly 51 minutes. We got on a plane in like two hours. Um, it's one of these planes over here. We're flying to Rome. We're currently staying at the Radisson Blue Hotel at Stansted Airport. If you want to see a review of the hotel, we released that video last week. But today is a travel day to Rome where we're going to get, we're going to be arriving in Rome at like 10.30 in the morning. We've got a full day in Rome when we get there. This is madness. Anna's not very happy about being up at this hour. But they had to carry all of Anna's bags and things into the airport, so I couldn't really hold a camera while we were in there. I got distracted by the Lego store, which I'll level with you. Knowing there was a Lego store in Stansted Airport is probably the thing I was most excited about today. I'm excited about the Rome trip in general, but today specifically, I was really excited for an airport Lego store. So we went there. Purchases made then. It feels so weird leaving the Lego store without my shiny new set that I've just spent £230 on, but I've got a little receipt. I've got a little map for where to pick it up from when we get back on Tuesday so fingers crossed that all runs smoothly and then we had some breakfast in the airport lounge and it's still like 4 30 a.m at this point we're in the airport lounge much better selection of food in here than normal it's very very busy but got a nice bacon and sausage croissant a cup of coffee very nice and then I kind of put the camera away to get on the plane and I took a couple of photos outside of the aeroplane window of the Alps as we flew over those. Apparently we flew over the bit of the Alps because we took coordinates. We flew over the bit of the Alps that's sort of over Switzerland, almost into Italy, sort of almost in Austria as well. It was cool. The views from up there were awesome. Uh, but then by the time we landed here in Rome at about 9.30, 10 a.m. local time, I was a broken man. I'd been up seven hours at that point and I don't know that I'd ever been so tired I only had about three or four hours sleep that's not, I know I'm absolutely exaggerating but I feel like I've given myself jet lag on a trip that was only a two hour flight and a one hour time difference so we came here got to the hotel couldn't check into our hotel straight away um, because we got here at like 11 o'clock and you can't check into a hotel at 11 o'clock in the morning so we sat in the bar for a bit I edited the Lego store video from earlier in the day and then around about 12 the wonderful people here at the Citizen M Hotel in Rome let us check in early at no extra cost I might add so we checked in and did this little room tour and I warn you it's the most deranged room tour you've ever seen because I just felt like I didn't have any brain in me anymore Hands up everybody who is ready for a Citizen M Hotel Rome room tour. I mean, you're getting one anyway. Just wanted to see if you put your hands in the air. Let's, I mean, our room is here. Let's go in and have a look, shall we? So, scanny, scanny. This is actually the second room we've had. The first room we had, had really noisy air conditioning. Um, I have already checked in. It doesn't come with a free woman. Um, that is Anna. She is obviously accompanying me on this trip. Look at the size of this mirror. Your first opportunity to ogle Kev. Here I am, look. Fit check. That's what they do, isn't it, on TikTok? They do a fit check. We have to do a fit check. Um, but we come around in a little L shape. We're at the end of the corridor. So we've stayed in a couple of Citizen M's before. We had one in Amsterdam a few years ago. I stayed in one in Paris on my own last year. Um, yeah, this is a fridge. A little fridge drawer um, and bins, two of, one for recycling, presumably. And then we've got a couple of windows. I think all of the blinds and everything are controlled by the iPads. That's usually how things work in a Citizen M hotel. How do you get in here? There you go, this is the door. So this is our little bathroom. Sit. I can't get in from that side. Let's go around this side. So we've got the shower in here, toilet, bum washing zone and another opportunity to ogle at Kev. Now, it is worth pointing out that I have been up since 3.30 this morning. No, three this morning. Our flight was at 6.20. We got up very, very early. It's quarter past 12 Rome time now. We've just got into the hotel and we're tired. We're gonna have a nap in a minute. So that's why I've got bags under my eyes. I am still keeping up the skincare routine. Don't you worry. I don't know what that is, but I don't know if that's been left here or if that's, if that's a thing. The shower caps. And then we have 
little desk situation. And as with all the sitters and M's, we have a cuddly friend and these awesome dogs. Plus it says my name on the TV, hello, Kevin. And then pretty much everything is controlled by the in-room iPad, so every room has an iPad. Since we last stayed in a Citizen M, they have upgraded to the new iPad minis. Good choice, it is the best iPad, I have one of these. But if we have a look at how this works. So firstly, we get a Howdy Citizen Kevin, and then from here, we can control the lights. So that's the colors in the bathroom, I think. Um, so I guess if we turn that to red it'll, or yellow, it will change the colors. So I've made this that colour, so you go, it changes the colour in the bathroom. I don't know why you'd want to change the colour of your bathroom lighting, but at Citizen M, you can. Um, we can also turn the lights on or off, so that's actually changing this little under the bed lighting here, or it was. Oh, there you go. Over here as well. Yeah, so it has a little bit of a delay on it, but we can turn those lights on or off. We can open the blinds, so need sleep. Yes, oh no, I don't know. Right, so we're making it lighter. I think. I think the blinds might already be up. I don't know what the difference between blinds and curtains is. Oh, something's happening. It's all on a slight delay, but there you go. I've asked for the, I, I've asked for the blinds to go up and the curtains to come down, so they're actually swapping over <laughs> halfway. Um, and these ones are going up as well and also swapping over. Um, I want everything open, please. Everything open. So it's now very dark. Which one are blinds, which ones are curtains? I don't know the difference. There you go, everything is now going up, so we're gonna get some light in here again. Oh no, and some are still coming down again. So I am doing something wrong. I can't get them to move independently of each other. This is a disaster. Right, okay. We are now going to have a bit of a view outside in a second. And then you can also adjust the temperature in here on the climate control. So we've got it set to 18 because it's quite warm. And also moods. So I, if Anna gets in a mood, I think I can control it and turn it off again, which is good. There you go. You can't get in a mood because I can control you with that. So this is our view out of this window. We are right in the centre of Rome. I don't know if these windows open. They do not. Um, but as you can see, Roman architecture down there. Roman vehicles. And Roman roads. Yeah, Roman people with Roman shopping. Uh, the cactus farm box is there in front of us. And then if we come and clamber over the bed, which by the way, the bed only actually comes to here, and then this is harder. So I'm gonna clam, clang my feet into that in the night and it's not gonna be very pleasant. But over here we have some kind of river and a bridge out here and Roman tour bus, Roman trees. But first, before any of that, I need to close the curtains again and make use of the Roman bed because we've been up too long. We only got like three or four hours sleep last night. It is time for a nap. And then we will see you on the other side of the nap when it will probably be nearly dinner time. Because when I say nap, I mean, I want my other four hours sleep that I didn't get last night. So I'll see you when it's starting to get dark and we'll go and explore out there. We're here for five days. We don't have to rush out and explore the city right now. And then after that, we slept and slept and slept and I've now slept. I've had a shower. As you can see, I've done something weird with my hair. So I have a little hair chimney. That's not part of the Rome landscape. That's my hair chimney. Um, I slept and it's now 18 minutes to five local time. And we've made, this is the roof of the hotel. We've made it onto the roof of the hotel. It's a really nice little rooftop terrace bar up here where we've got some lovely views of just like Roman architecture, which is awesome. I think this would be a very cool place to watch the sunset. We probably will do that at some point over the trip, but this is supposed to be a travel vlog. And I promise you, we're still here for four more days. You will get proper Rome travel vlog stuff. But I think for the rest of today, we're just gonna go into the city center proper and see if we can find something nice to have for dinner. The only food I've eaten today was my sausage and bacon croissant, European fusion food, my European fusion breakfast that I had in the airport lounge at like 4.30 this morning. That's all I've eaten. So I am absolutely starving. But I hear they do quite good pizza and pasta here in Rome. So we're gonna go and try and find some of that. Apparently, the city center proper, I did look up what it's called, hold on. The Centro Storico um, is 10 minutes away 
walking or 10 minutes away by taxi. And if you go to taxi, we go in a big triangle. So we're going to get downstairs. I'm going to gauge Anna's interest in walking for 10 minutes. What's your interest in walking for 10 minutes? We're probably going to get a taxi into the centre of Rome and then see what we can find when we're in there. If I happen to catch some Pokemon on the way, I will. But yeah, we're, uh, we're going to go and see what the centre of Rome has to offer early evening on a Friday. Anna is approaching, bear with me. Hello, Anna. So what have we learnt today? What have we learnt today? That we don't get the 6.20 a.m. flight. Because also when we were in the airport lounge this morning, I did mention to Anna, oh, there's a, there's a 9.30 flight oh, no, no, here as well. On the plane. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a 9.30 flight that I saw in the airport lounge. So I think what past Kev has done, I mean, he is a, he is a nightmare for this. I mentioned this in last week's video where we did the hotel review at Stansted. Um, I think what past Kev has done is just booked the cheapest flight to Rome and not thought of any of the logistics, and then a little bit closer to the time, has realised, oh, hang on, a 6.20 flight means we have to be at the airport at like 4.30, which means we're gonna have to, if we come from home, get up at like 2.30, so we better get a hotel. But even staying in the hotel, we were up at three, so we could be out of the hotel at four. Obviously, having a night in a hotel is much more expensive than the difference would have been if I'd have just booked the slightly more expensive later flight, absolute false economies. That's a Roman siren, by the way. Heard a lot of them. Um, we are pretty central. So what I've learned is that for the future, we, uh, we book the 9.30 flight or just the slightly later flight rather than getting up super early, having to get a hotel and then being broken when we get it. Because if we'd have got that 9.30 flight, we'd have got here at like 12. We wouldn't have been tired because we would have just got up at a normal human time and we'd have actually spent the afternoon out exploring. So by getting up earlier and flying earlier, we've lost most of the day. I blame Anna for not calling me on it when we were still at home. Let's go find Rome. We decided to walk it to try and get our bearings. We've just left the hotel. The first thing we've noticed is just how British we are because everyone else and I noticed it when this was when I was in Barcelona last year as well. Everyone around us has got their coats on, like it's the middle of winter. Me and Anna just in our t-shirts. It's 18 degrees at the moment at nearly 5 p.m. It's not warm, but I don't want to be wrapped up in a coat either. We've come from cold old England, so we're going to take advantage of a little bit of spring weather. We found one of these. Anna, as a rule, is a fan of one of these. Because I've climbed them. Yeah. She, look, she has looked at ruins in the ground now in London, Lincoln, and Rome. Any other cities you've looked at ground ruins in? She loves a ground ruin. Because I've been on them. I know, you've climbed all this in Assassin's Creed. I am familiar with it. But it's cool. I want to get down there and have a play. There seems to be a walk system. I wish I could do parkour. <laughs> I need to learn. I think we're very close to what I would class as like a traditional city centre now. There are shops I recognise. We've just walked past Vodafone, Tiger over there. It's just getting busier and busier. There's a tram line that runs along there. And yeah, I think we're, we're hitting the busy bit, which is what we were aiming for. I just, want some, I just want something to eat. I need some food. Well, I've actually done a little bit of research because, you know, travel vloggers and all that. The Curia de Pompeii. Uh, basically, a 2,000-year-old theatre is what I've been able to gather. 55 BC, used to have a stage, seating, temple, meeting places, and it's still sort of here now. And, really conveniently, ancient Roman taxi rank right next to it, which is an incredible piece of convenience and consideration if we want to come back here. You know me, boys and girls, if I see a statue of an elephant, I'm going to film myself in front of the statue of the elephant, and it seems like a lot of these people have had the same idea. Seems quite popular. Yeah. Elephant obelisk. We still haven't found anywhere to eat. I'm going to start eating my own arm in a minute. Although apparently, this is the Pantheon, and it's quite touristy, I've heard. Doing my due diligence. So we're going to have a little look at that. There you go, this is the backside of a Pantheon, if you ever wondered what that was like. I think there's some fancy pillars and things around the front, but apparently this is another 2,000-year-old thing, but this one hasn't fallen down yet, so guess was built better than the previous one. I see an ice cream shop. Forget Pantheons, I might be getting a nice Italian ice cream. Based on the queues to get into the Pantheon, it definitely feels like this is a touristy thing we're supposed to do. On the flip side of that, it's not something I'm going to queue up to do based on my current hunger levels. We actually had this on our little almost itinerary 
as a plan for Sunday or I'm Monday. Sorry, I'm trying to take pictures. You're trying to take, pictures. Anna's taking pictures. But uh, yeah, we've walked past it in our hunt for food. Um, this whole little square is surrounded by restaurants. So I think we are just gonna pick one of these and eat. The one problem we have got is that there is a member of our party who shall remain nameless, who is both gluten intolerant and lactose intolerant, which is a challenge in Italy because it means you can't have pasta or cheese or ice cream. Don't know what she thinks she's going to be eating at any point. There you go. We can just about get my face. That pokey thing and the Pantheon all in the same shot. Tourism. Uh, they do gluten-free pasta just there as well, which is quite exciting. Uh, we're just looking at all the menus of all these different places around here. This isn't supposed to just be a food vlog, but uh, we do want food. And I suspect now is the time to eat because they eat late here, so we can probably get a table at this time because it's still only 5.30. It's very busy in this little area. I basically put into Google Maps city, Rome city centre, and this is where it brought me to. So I guess this is one of the big main points that you aim at. I have lost Anna, which is a problem because she's small and I cannot see her. There she is. She's below the level of the crowd, so I had no idea where she'd gone. Now, before you all tell me, I do 100% know if you eat within sight of a tourist attraction, you are in a tourist trap. I get that. I get it's probably not going to be 100% authentic and it might be quite expensive, but I'm starving and it smells delicious, so we're eating here. We have some non-alcoholic cocktails with a virgin pina colada and something called a bitter twist, which is that. And looking at the ingredients, I think it's gonna be the closest. I used to like an old fashioned one I used to drink. It's not like that, but it is nice. Lovely and bitter. There we go. To start, we have bruschetta. We're actually sharing a bruschetta because a portion was two, but I wanted to be ready for my pasta. Well, I don't know if the microphone is picking up the sizzle from Anna's steak because the microphone's attached to me, but that steak has some sizzle. She also has a little Mediterranean vegetable assortment. I went for a massive seafood pasta, which looks amazing. Look at it. Well, there we go, this is the Italian way. We've been in there like two and a half hours. We didn't even have dessert. We had some lovely coffee though. But look at it, it's so nice when it's all lit up behind us. We've had this guy out here playing music the whole time and I've spent my entire meal looking at that ice cream shop over there. I'm absolutely stuffed, so I can't have an ice cream now. There's definitely gonna be an ice cream in my future though. But I think it's half past seven, having been up at three. I know we had a nap this afternoon, but I think our plan now is to head back to the hotel and call it a day. We might see something fun on the way back, we shall see. But for now, we're going for another stroll. There's so many laser shows and just so much activity and chaos going. He's trying to sell Anna a laser torch. There's just so much stuff. I love busy, bustling atmospheres like this. This is, this is awesome. One of my favorite things to do whenever we go anywhere is the local supermarkets. We're looking for hotel snacks because you gotta have hotel snacks. I love just examining the different flavors of crisps. And also we've got sandwiches over here and I just find it fascinating. All the different food options. I might get a squeezy dog, one big bag of hotel snacks. We'll do a haul when we get back to the hotel. We're back here again where we were earlier because it's on the way back to the hotel, but it is uh, infinitely prettier at this time of night because it's all nicely lit up. And it just looks awesome. That's shorter over there. And Anna's standing on a step to be able to see it. <laughs> With her new Crocs that she bought at the airport this morning because her shoes are hurting her. These are Stansted Airport specials. There's also some very pretty things lit up over that side of the road as well, including a very green pharmacy. Our hotel's over here somewhere. So we are back in our hotel room, which means only one thing. Snack haul. Let's have a look to see what we got. Um, this cost us about 20 euros, so you can let us know just how much we've been ripped off by going to the one near the tourist attraction. Um, first, we actually got a couple of little magnets because we like to have magnets of the cities that we go to that live on our fridge. So Anna picked that one, 
which is just a little tray of olive oils. And I've got this one, which is a broken down old building, which I believe is also a Lego set. So we've got those. And then the actual snack haul, I like to get local mystery crisps. I assume these are just ready salted, but they'll be fun in learning. Um, Anna selected some Kinder Bueno minis because she has no imagination. She oh, has, you like, have these at home. I like this, I like. I know. Um, and then when we were at the till, she also pointed out another Kinder product, which is Kinder DC Funko. So it's like mini Funko Pop DC Kinder thing. I don't even, does this have a toy in it? I don't really. No idea. I don't even know if it has a toy in it or if I've just bought a couple of Kinder yogurts. Because I think this is just three Kinder yogurts with a picture of some Funko Pops on the box. That was four euros 50. I'm a bit sad now, but that was at the till. So she, she hoodwinked me with it. We have some happy hippos as well. Okay, I've never seen happy hippos before. Have you had them before? Okay. She's had happy hippos before as well. Um, Double stuffed happy hippos. Well, there you go. Um, I got some of this because we had this in Tenerife and it was delicious. Tuck obviously is a huge thing in Europe and Milka is great chocolate. So that is a combination of the two and it is delicious. It's like salty chocolate. Um, Anna, once again, adventuring with Tic Tacs. She likes to try different Tic Tac flavors wherever she goes. Berry mix Tic Tacs. And then a couple, oh no, there's still more. We've got some Fonzies, which we don't know what Fonzies are. I think they're crisps. We don't know what flavor Fonzies are. Um, and then I got my usual fused tea lemon that I get any time I leave the UK. And Anna, despite the fact that there's a water fountain downstairs that I've been filling my bottle up with, and I quote, likes Evian. So she had to get some of this, which I'll bung in our little fridge in our room as well. But that is the completion of snack haul and also the end of today's vlog. It's only quarter past eight. We've only been awake again for about four and a half hours, but I think we're just gonna go to sleep now and uh, do a proper full day tomorrow. We're gonna hopefully go to the Coliseum tomorrow. We haven't got any tickets. We don't even know if we really wanna go in, but we certainly wanna see it. And once we're there, we're going to figure out if there's an easy way to do it without Anna walking up and down lots of stairs. So hopefully that'll be on next week's video. We have a full day of just exploring the city tomorrow and it's going to be awesome. So if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for us. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of the Rome series, plus the upcoming Edinburgh, Lanzarote, Centre Parks, Disneyland series is, is Rotterdam. We've got lots of travel coming up. They'll all be documented here on this channel. So make sure you subscribe subscribe. I'm a YouTuber and can't say subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. So I can't say notifications either. You can tell I'm tired. You know what to do. It's YouTube. We'll see you next week. Toodle pip.